Welcome to Massive Beers. My name is Matt. We do the beer stuff here, and I'm very excited for this one. Char. 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 Char from Pride Brewing. Uh, Pride Brewing sends off beers um, semi-regularly. This is one they sent off. Um, I did an unboxing. You can go watch that. Uh, and I couldn't do like the whole up close thing because my camera wasn't working. You can see it's got this beautiful background of a like, char from the inside of the barrel. It's got me all hot and bothered. I didn't connect that because I didn't really look at it. I was worried about my camera not working during the unboxing. And I didn't put two and two together. I'm like, char, okay, whatever, char. But it didn't connect. I read in the back American Strong Ale, Age and Rye Whiskey Barrels. It's like, what, son? This is the stuff that gets me hot and bothered. They sent like a, a weird hybrid beer along with that, to, along with this box too. But we're di di diving into char. I unboxed this less than a half an hour ago. Let's put it that way. That's how excited I am to dive into this. So, American Strong Ale, Rye Whiskey Barrels, gets my kind of hair to dog, spidey sense going. What's it going on in the back here? Words, lots of them. You can pause that if you want to read it yourself. Hopefully it's in focus. Um, Char, American Strong Ale, Asian Rye Whiskey Barrels. What you're holding is our Rye Whiskey Barrel Age American Strong Ale, comma, Char, exclamation point. Uh, constructed from a huge uh, base of heavily roasted crystal malts and potent American hops, this beer has spent four weeks in stainless steel, then was transferred into first use um, Eight-year Maryland rye whiskey barrels, courtesy of our friends at Sagamore Spirits. The result is a deeply complex beverage with notes of cherry, cordial, prune, toasted oak, coconut, and vanilla. We are thrilled to celebrate and pay tribute to the vast history of rye in our old line state. I hope you enjoy it as much as we do. 12.7% alcohol by volume. They actually literally call out that you should drink this out of a teku. That's not happening. We're just doing this stemless wine. Um... They don't actually tell you how long it sat in the whiskey barrels. They say, okay, it spent this time in stainless, went to this time of age whiskey barrel. I would have liked to know how, how long it sat in that whiskey barrel. So we'll see what's what. So you're talking about American Strong Ale, um, rye whiskey barrels. We're talking about spiciness here. So we're talking about we're expecting a decent amount of hops. We're talking about we're expecting a bit of whiskey spiciness here. Hopefully this is very char forward i mean if you're going to call a beer char and the, the barrel char doesn't show up it's kind of like i just have to be like angry let's not assume let's not ask out of you and me and just talk about beer label fantastic man it's the red on char it's a beautiful picture of char this is what i expect from american strong ale um and for you it probably looks much darker than what it looks like to me to me it's very much kind of like a, a mahogany with a dollop of orange to it um and uh, relatively clear, most American strong ales are. Um, so it looks all the part of barley wine. Really, when you're talking about American strong ale, you're talking about American barley wine. But for me, the malt base tends to be a little bit kind of tweaked. They're talking about a heavy dose of like a caramelized kind of crystal malt kind of thing going on. Um, but it looks all the part of barley wine. And that's what it should look like. Um, you know, I like me my murkiness, but for an American strong ale, it kind of makes sense. Um, there was a head on it, dissipated decently, but you give it a soft little twirl comes back really nice the nose hopefully the nose knows not much there to be perfectly honest with you you can tell it's a big beer you're dealing with a i mean this in a positive light a less hopped up version of arrogant bastard is how kind of how it's coming off for me i'm not getting a huge whiskey component i'm not getting this precursor of like a huge barrel chart thing it really comes off as a boozy kind of hoppy american strong ale not in the negative sense like i can tell that's what's going on here but when you're talking about you know introducing that whiskey barrel to the to the game i kind of and you call the beer char I kind of expect it to kind of jump out and punch me in the nose a little bit. So, without calling out how long it's stayed in the barrel, I'm assuming that maybe this spent, you know, months, not years, in a barrel. I mean, they just moved to Baltimore, so it can't be in a barrel all that long. Unless they did it on the West Coast, which would be highly illegal. But, let's see. We're just diving in. Cheers, y'all. That's delicious. The nose doesn't know. The nose does not know. 
That's fucking delicious. Mmm. Talk about vanilla and coconut. Good God. Good God. That is really tasty. Man. And, then, and, and it's weird because a lot of times I'll, I'll, um, I'll very much kind of like interchange uh, American barley wine and American strong ale. But there is a distinct difference. It's it's like the old uh, the old saying that I bring up every now and then about the Supreme Court talking about pornography, and it's like kind of sometimes hard to explain it, but you know it when you see it. More specifically, in this case, you know it when you taste it. This is very much an American strong ale. It has like almost like a a little bit more kind of like a caramelized sweetness to it. That's typically probably the biggest kind of indicator for me that kind of separates it. I know it's very dividing lines very very tight there but the way this beer kind of comes off let's just dive through it first things first the mouth feels perfect it has a density to it I think you can lose quite quickly because you don't want this beer to be over carbed you can go under carbed and then it gets a little bit thin on you we talk about introducing a barrel that's another hurdle you have to cross and that's probably another difference for me when it comes to barley wine versus American strong ale. It's 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 sticky. It's sticky and dense without being hefty or I'm I'm searching for the best word I can. And I don't think I'm going to be able to come up with this. So I'm just going to move on. It has a drinkable kind of density to it. The bittering and the sweetness here is really the kind of, like, well, I shouldn't say a star show, is really the meat, the bones, the concrete, the foundation of the beer. Because you get this pop of bitterness immediately when you go to swallow. It stops short of being, like, resinous and hyper-bittering, but it kind of is decently, or at least approaching hyper-bittering, but... It's tempered by a very sweet beer. 12% American Strong Ale in a whiskey barrel. You're expecting sweet, so it's a no shit Sherlock thing. It's very much appreciated. The sweet portion of the show here, while that bittering again is slightly resinous, it's not over the top, like, leaning in, in that direction, but it's there. The sweetness is very, very much helped out by the whiskey here, and very much by the way the barrel kind of presents itself. That char is there. And it probably aids that bittering portion of the show. We'll circle back on that. But it, it is this combination of this caramelized brown sugar, caramelized crystal malt in combination with a sweet. I wouldn't even call it like the whiskey comes off as almost like a it's rye. It's rye for sure. And it adds a spiciness to it. Again, that adds to that kind of building up that bittering with the char and the hops, but there's a sweetness to it. When you combine that vanilla coconut, which is absolutely there, like I said, on the get from the taste, you're like, oh, this vanilla coconut is beautiful. And when you combine it with the sweetness of the malt and the sweetness of the whiskey, it adds this almost, it stops short of being confectionery, but it's nowhere even close to saccharine sweet or like, um, like hard candy kind of sweet. It's that cool kind of trick that that I want to say ice cream but it, it's not the right descriptor it's just good how about that it's good end of video um man it's not oh and it, the, the coolest trick and I keep saying the coolest trick because there's so many tricks it's pulling off is that it's not it's like so drinkable which is like really hard to pull off of a beer of this ilk. You can have like, you know, these double digit ABV, you know, milk stout porter, imperial porters that kind of just lean heavily into softness and kind of trick you in it. There's nothing like here that's kind of like very meek about the beer. It's bold, it's boisterous, you know? The rye whiskey is omnipresent. You know, the malt based sweetness is very much here. You know, uh, that spiciness of the rye whiskey in combination with that charry kind of burntiness of that barrel char absolutely there that coconut everything here is volumetric but it's blended and that's again the coolest part of the mirror um number nine is that it's all cohesive it's all very much coming from a core from a center 
that is just working in unison. I know I talked about that before, and I think if you drink a lot of beer, you kind of know what I'm talking about. It's like, it's very much like a lot of times people make this kind of beer, and it's very much bitter, barrel, whiskey, malt, all separate, and you're drinking here, like I can tell these are all fun components, but they're all just kind of working individually, in not in concert, not in unison. It's not the case in this beer. Man, I love this. I love this kind of beer. Man, this is going to suck. By that I mean, if you watch the unboxing of this beer, I got two of them. And I said, and what I should do is I should review this beer. Today is July 15th. And I should wait a couple of years and then I should review the second one. It's not gonna happen. This beer is too tasty. This beer is absolutely too tasty to wait two years to drink it again. Like I almost need to give it to somebody and be like, don't let me have this beer for two years. And then two years from now, give it back to me. <laughs> because that's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna, you know what, I am. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let this sit. And I'm gonna give it some time, a couple years, and I'll dive back into it. And then two weeks from now, a week from now, a couple days from now, I'll be like, man, I want something barrel aged. I want something malty. I'll be like, oh man, I got one of those. Ooh, I got one of those. Man, it's, uh, fuck it. I'm opening it. That's what's gonna happen. I'm telling you right now, I have no willpower. Anyway, back to my troubles. Um, this is fantastic, honestly. It very much, like, I, I went into it kind of leaning into, like, a very much kind of, and I mentioned it, like, a, a hair to dog kind of thing. And it's not that. It's it, it's heavily West Coast influenced in the way the bittering kind of comes off. But there's this really kind of, like, like almost like Firestone Walker-esque kind of, more like sukaba y kind of vibe to the whole thing. It's very much kind of like an American, a uh, bittering, bittering version of Sukaba. It's probably the best way I can kind of relate it. Um, I think that's high praise, because I think Sukaba is the king shit of fuck mountain, more specifically when it comes to coconut. It very much comes off like that for me. And I don't like to call other breweries kind of beers and kind of relate them to the, to what I'm drinking now, but I think it's kind of very, very distinctive, very apt, and, and makes a lot of sense. Because it has that rich sweetness to it. It has that nice coconut vanilla kind of combination. It has that sweeter, for lack of a better term, pseudo-confectionery kind of sweetness from the uh, whiskey, but it adds that char. It adds that spiciness from the rye. It adds that I'm like smacking my palate. I just love it so much, even when I'm not drinking it. It just adds those uh, those kind of spicy bittering combinations on top of it that makes it something unique and a bit special. You know, I don't think you see this beer made that often nowadays. You know, a lot of people, if they're going to lean into a barrel aged beer, it's going to be a, you know a bourbon barrel aged stout, if not a pastry stout, or they're going to be like, let's just do super trendy barley wine. You're talking about American Old Ale, which is is you know very few and far between, especially from smaller breweries. And then just pivoting, not just to rye whiskey, but locally done rye whiskey. Hats off. Hats off, Brian Pryor. I dig this quite a bit. It's probably one of the better barrel-aged beers I've had recently. Actually, in quite some time. It's Mount Rushmore status for me. We can put it on there. Because it's like a lot of the barrel-aged stuff I've had as of late has been very, very kind of like just let me down. There's been like little nibbles here and little kind of miss there. Miss This beer doesn't miss for me really at all. And it's kind of fun, because it's a really fun review for me to do, and probably a fun review to watch, because it did not start off great. You know, it started off with a nose that I thought was kind of ultra-mediocre, like not much to it. And I'll stand by that, you know. I said it kind of reminded me of a different version of Arrogant Bastard. I didn't mean that as a negative. A lot of people would take it that way. But to flip the script on the taste like that, to bring the levels of complexity and funness from the American Strong Ale in combination with that Rye Whiskey Barrel, I think it's a really cool play. I think it's a really deft hand. And I think it's a very, very tasty beer. I already went over the Mount Rushmore, Yas, Barrel Age, Yas, all that fun stuff. I dig it. I really dig it. Brian, let's talk about it. I'll post this the same time I do the Experimental Hazy. I'll try to do maybe all three. They sent me three different beers. Maybe I'll try to post them all on the same day. We'll see what's what. Um, I will definitely post this 
without a doubt, with the experimental IPA, spoiler alert, wasn't a big fan of that for a couple different reasons. You can watch that review just as a counterbalance to that beer with this beer. Brian, have you had their beers? Have you had this beer? I'm really curious. I really want to know. I know he sends Brian and uh, Pariah and his wife, I should mention, just not just say he, but um, uh, I know they send Kyle from the Hype Beer Reviews. I think Greg from Greg's Beer Reviews gets them. So I know I'm going to find a little bit of information, at least on my own, when I go out and kind of look and see if people are going to enjoy this beer. But, you know, outside of that, uh, you know, I always go to Untap, but I really like to hear from y'all if you've had any of these beers, but more specifically this one. Have you been to Pariah? Have you had this beer? All that fun stuff down there. Done. Done and done. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully enjoying some strong hour right now. Hopefully see you next time. Cheers, y'all.